Highland Workforce Development and Education is proud to present this parental education video. It is one in a series that will provide helpful information on current topics that relate to your school age children. Ready to learn about another of the personalities that we've been talking about? Well, before we get into the perfect personality, which also happens to be one of my personalities, I would like to just quickly review the ones that we've been talking about. This is from Florence Littower's book, Personality Plus. The powerful personality is that let's do it my way and get her done. This person is the coach of the team. The peaceful personality is the let's just all get along and do things the easy way. And those would be the players who just choose to work as a team. The popular personality is the bubbly cheerleader who always thinks everything's going to turn out okay. And finally is the perfect personality where they want things done, but they want them done correctly. Let's do things the right way. And today as we focus on that personality, I'd like to open by showing you a brief video clip of one of Winnie the Pooh characters. Uh, <coughs> oh, you too, little piglet. Go ahead, I'm ready. Cheer me up. Oh, Eeyore, I I I'd love to. I, I, I mean, I I'm supposed to, but I, I guess I'm really here to to apologize. You were always sitting up here so, so sad. Then everyone did such a good job of cheering you up, and I, I, I have no way to make you happy. So that's what this is all about. Well, I'm grateful to you all, even if you almost killed me. But I don't come up here because I'm sad. I come up here because I'm happy. No? No. Let me show you something. Because you are a good friend. Now, watch that cloud. Piglet, just returning the favor. Eeyore wasn't up on that mountain because he was sad, as the others supposed he was. No, he was up there on that mountain thinking and reflecting, and he saw some things that the others had never noticed. Even as babies, perfect melancholies seem to like the quiet, they like a routine, they like a schedule. Our son James wanted his own bed when it was time to go to sleep. And we actually broke the bed because we took it on a trip strapped to the top of our van because he didn't sleep unless he was in his bed. While popular sanguines look for attention from the outside, Perfect melancholies look for understanding on the inside. They want someone to understand, truly understand, how they're feeling. Perfect melancholies aren't always able to share how they're feeling. They sort of want you to just understand that and feel like if you truly cared, you would indeed understand how they're feeling. 
While sanguine children are sharing blow by blow each and every moment of the exciting party they attended, the perfect melancholy child may not want to talk about it at all. They need to get away by themselves and just process the whole event. In fact, people are almost exhausting at times. One thing's for certain, if a perfect melancholy child starts to open up to you, you better stop and listen. They're not one to repeat it again if they get interrupted or if you appear not to be interested. Perfect melancholies don't need the fanfare that some personalities need. In fact, a quiet pat on the back and good job whispered in their ear means more to them than all the other excitements and accolades in front of other people. They need their space and sometimes they just need to get away from everyone to have some me time. These children are very much in tune with their emotional needs and their physical conditions. Um, they can border on hypochondria sometimes. If they hear about an illness, they think they have it now. Uh, every injury is a major injury. Every illness could be a serious disease. And while it's humorous to us as parents, it's hurtful to them if we laugh or make fun of them for being serious about their health. Perfect children are very tender-hearted and sensitive. Long after the popular personality has flitted off to the next conversation or the next event, the perfect melancholy child is the one who stays behind to talk to a grandparent or phones an elderly person just to see how they're doing. When we uh, were taking care of my elderly mother, my son, who happens to be perfect melancholy along with me, was the one who was concerned about me and how I was doing. And his daily phone call to check on me meant everything. Now I'm gonna talk just a little bit about how each of the personalities as a parent should relate to the perfect melancholy child. A sanguine parent who loves to be the life of the party can often embarrass that perfect melancholy child. They interrupt, they uh, get loud, and the perfect melancholy who is a rule follower and a do what is right can sometimes be overwhelmed or even embarrassed by the parent that acts that way. The popular sanguine doesn't mind being late picking up a child and uh, they were on the phone talking to a friend, but the perfect melancholy can receive that as she didn't care that I was standing here waiting. She isn't worried about me. They do think deeply and so you have to realize how they're perceiving what you're doing rather than how you intended it to be. A popular parent might plan a surprise 16th birthday party for one of their children. But just remember, a perfect melancholy child is not into surprises. They might be embarrassed by all the hoopla and um, not know how to respond with people in their house uh, that they weren't expecting. The popular sanguine parent makes mistakes and laughs about them, and that's a really positive thing that they can do for the perfect melancholy child, is help them to see that a mistake is okay, no one is perfect, we'll live to see another day. So that's a very positive thing that a popular sanguine parent can give to the perfect melancholy child. What about the powerful parent who is trying to be a good parent to a perfect melancholy child? Well, be careful about how assertive that you are. This child doesn't make quick decisions. They want to make the right decision. So they're gonna agonize and they're gonna study and they need time to be able to do that. And when you're barking your orders like a drill sergeant, your child is internalizing that. They will remember it long after you have forgotten what you said. These children don't need punishment often. They punish themselves. And so what you need to work on as a powerful parent is teaching them to be assertive and express their feelings. You can mow over them by expecting your way or demanding your way, but you'd be far better off to listen to them, to ask for their opinion, 
and to have the patience to hear them out. Let's talk now about the perfect parent who parents the perfect child. Sounds like a match made in heaven, and it can be. You can have deep understanding of one another, but there are times when a perfect child can get to a perfect parent by being sloppy. If they think it'll push your buttons, they may try it. As was the case with me, sometimes perfect parents can be off the chart with how they react to a mistake. And just remember that you're probably perceiving it deeper than anyone else on the planet, and so you can lighten up. As my mother told me one time, and I've learned it was very good advice, you don't have to see everything that your children do. So there are times when you just need to overlook and help that perfect child realize you made a mistake. It's okay. Tomorrow's a new day. The final personality that I'm just going to touch on as a parent is that peaceful parent who has the perfect child. This can be a match made in heaven because they're both quiet and both rather introverted. The perfect melancholy child can probably just relax around that peaceful parent because the demands are not so great. And they get each other in some respects as far as uh, being worn out and exhausted with people and so many tasks to do. One thing to keep in mind though as a peaceful parent is if that child that's perfect has even a hint of powerful, they will take control of the house and you won't have a way of getting it back. So you have to know what the primary and secondary personalities are of your children to know exactly how to relate and how best to deal with them. Okay, I'm going to close by sharing the you might be a perfect melancholy if top 10 list. You might be a perfect melancholy if you got the Good Citizen Award two years in a row for the whole school. You might be a perfect melancholy if you remember that your sister got her Facebook account when she was 12 years, 364 days old, and you're having to wait till you're 13. You're harder on yourself than anyone else would be. You are devastated that your dad flushed your pet dead fish down the toilet. You could mow the grass in your best clothes, not break a sweat, and not get a hair out of place. Your friend comes up with a spur-of-the-moment adventure and you think of all the reasons it's not going to work out. You read Consumer Report before you buy a blender. You internalize the problems that other people have. You live vicariously through your friend or your spouse who skydives or hand glides, doing all the things you wish you had the courage to do. You might be a perfect melancholy because the world needs someone with your heart and your sensitivity and your desire to get things right.